If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Master Mind Pump, Pump. Pump. Uh, we talk about some of our coming of age first times. Uh, first time slow dancing. It's the so first sexy. dance. And the first kiss uh, we ever had. With each other. Yeah. <laughs> it was sloppy. No, we don't talk <laughs> yes, about that, actually. Yeah. Uh, Way too much tongue from Sal. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, really cool. Every time. We talk about my first pube. Thanks, Doug, for writing that up there. <laughs> uh, and uh, early dating stories. Uh. And then we get into the fitness. Uh, the first question is, uh, if you're a personal trainer and somebody asks you to help them lose weight really quickly for an event, how should you approach that? Because you want to give them the right advice, but they want to lose weight real quick. Then we get into another question where we talk about the growing success of Mind Pump and uh, how we check ourselves. Uh, I think mm. this person is talking about Adam's ego getting too big. Yeah. Uh, I'm just reading into it, not sure. Yeah, it was gold chains. <laughs> then we talk about um, how we think about maybe potentially ever becoming life coaches because we know so much. Yeah. Uh, we want to coach you on everything. You want to do good in life? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to me. We're yeah. kicking life's ass, yeah. so yeah. fucking right sign up dick. here now. Uh, <laughs> and Kick our, life in the dick. Our last, <laughs> our last question is, and some of you will have known or know exactly what I'm about to say, uh, is we talk about whether or not we believe in psychics <laughs> and if we've ever had any but psychic. But you already knew that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. didn't you? We talk about any psychic experiences we may have had. Uh, finally, if you're listening to this episode right when it's being dropped, hurry the fuck up. You're lucky. Maps Prime Pro still on sale. If you listen to this episode the following day, sorry, you're out of luck. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Again, if you're lucky, Run. go to mindpumpmedia.com. Check out our newest program, Maps Prime Pro. It's a correctional based. Maps program to correct ka- karate. Cor- <laughs> It'd it's be our cool cor- if we did a karate. <laughs> it's program. our karate program. Maps karate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> get your get it's your like yellow belt. Chuck Norris and in two months. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Uh, it is our correctional program uh, designed to correct imbalances in the body. We look at the wrists, we look at the neck, the lumbar spine, the hips, the ankles, and, and the toes. We also um, recruited the movement specialist, Doctor Justin Brink, to help us with this program. It's amazing. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. Come to the end of the road. Eighth grade graduation for me. I can't let go. The mic just went away from me. That's too powerful. <laughs> it's unnatural. You belong to oh, me. Oh, shit. I belong to you. I feel like you said it's, it's unnatural. I don't give a shit what it says. Oh, okay. That's how I sing it. So that song... If you're a 90s kid, like we are, what I mean by 90s kid, we weren't born in the 90s. Mm. We were just like teenagers in the 90s. Yeah, we, we grew up with crisscross. That song was the fucking song at every school dance. Like that song is all, every school dance, that song was played and you had to go dance with some girl. Yeah. Can you remember the first time, like your first slow dance with a girl at a school dance? Mm-hmm. The and very you, first one? you try to slide your hand from their lower back like a little lower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to the to the top of yeah, the bar, right on the rump, right on the, yeah, the God, top. What of a it. good question! I don't remember my first like real slow dance with a girl. Mine was with Stacy Kyle. You remember totally, really? Yeah, sweating your dick off. Yeah, for oh, sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, just I, I pissed I pissed off some other girl because I was dancing. Nervous on where the hand where the hand goes on the back. Like how far down are you allowed to go? How far? Uh, up I went in. I was I, I you know I was like oh. you're doing this. I'm going in. You went, really? You went full booty? Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing, but yeah, I just kind of hugged her and was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of jocked her around, you know? wrestled a little. What little about bit? you, Sal? Or we got into a tussle. Were you? Do you remember the first time you danced with a girl? Or were you still uh, experimenting remember. with boys at that time? No, 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 no. Wow. I, was, I was already over that phase. <laughs> I remember uh, crystal meth phase. Exactly. <laughs> God damn. Oh, my kids don't listen to this. They're going to be like, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't listen. know you experimented with boys and you Sixth did crystal grade? meth. Listen, oh, yeah. listen You're I, hardcore, I, dad. I'm going to say this to my, my kids when they get older and listen to this. Like, no son. 99% <laughs> of the stuff that Adam says is joking. <laughs> 99%. So anyway, uh, I remember my first- What's we'll the fact check that. My first time, I was in seventh grade or eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade, and uh, I'm in the- 
Fuck, I can't remember the name of the group now. Ah, um, anyway, we're, we're, I'm at the dance and I'm wearing, do you guys remember when it was like in style where you wore like a button down shirt? You tuck it in, but it was in style to have it buttoned all the way up. Oh yeah. Mm. You know, but you didn't, you don't wear a tie or anything. You just buttoned it all. So I had a green shirt on. I, I, this is so crazy. I remember this mm. and I buttoned it all the way up, uh, to, to the very top yeah, and I'm like sitting there. And I'm just no, it wasn't. It wasn't like it wasn't that. Like that. That's the bottom wasn't open. open. The top. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. It was yeah. just. But you remember what I'm talking about. Adam right? knows what I'm talking. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still have some flannels yeah. like yeah. that. Right yeah. around that time, by the way, the bolo tie was in style. Remember the bolo tie? That was like the the the, the one that with the two like leather strings that would come oh down. Oh my god! Oh, that my was god. In, like, yeah, that was that was right, never in style. That was like right Except before for Chuck that. Norris. No, maybe. no, no. That shit was in for a second. So anyway, he's the only one that could, you know, front kick you. So anyway, I'm I'm at the dance, and you know what you do at a dance your first dance when you're a kid you're just kind of standing off on the side with your buddy and you're just like talking about like the girl or the hot one or whatever anyway song comes on and i can't believe i can't remember the name of the song oh i can't remember it was like two really overweight black dudes and they sang this really cool song that was i'll remember it i'll remember it's going to come to me halfway through the two episode overweight, overweight black, black dudes yeah and, one guy had like kind of dreads a little bit okay. pm dawn uh, PM, PM Don. Don. Yeah. Yes, yes. Wow, uh, I, don't I was remember. almost going to say Millie Vanilla, That's but they were in good say. shape. Yeah. No, they were wow, in good shape. They were no, no. good looking dudes. No, it was PM Dawn. And they didn't even sing. And it, it was that one song. Da, da. Remember the beginning of it? It kind of sings like that. Yeah. So that song comes on. I can't believe I just sang that, by the way. We're going to have to edit that out, Doug. No, I want to hear more. And uh, that song comes on. I'm like, oh, I fucking love this song. Like, like I got to go ask a girl yeah. to dance. And uh, man, I had a lot of balls as a young, as a young age because I actually asked a girl to dance. So I go over to her. Her name was Laura. I'm not going to say her last name, mm. just to protect her. But her name was Laura. So I walk up to her and I'm like, hey, do you want to wanna dance? And she's like, yeah. Now, remember in seventh grade, if a girl said yes, she wants to dance to you and you're a boy, you immediately are like, I knew she likes me. That's what I'm thinking in my head. But she didn't fucking like me. She just let me dance with her. And I got my hands on her hips and we're doing the like barely moving where my feet don't even move that much and kind of shifting rocky side to side. Yeah. yeah. And then after the dance was over, she's like, okay, thanks. And she moves off. And I was like, oh my God, I danced with her. I think she's, I totally have a crush on her. And I remember like at school the next day or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm like trying to talk with her. And she's like, why are you trying she's to talk like to me? ignoring you. And yeah. I'm like, we fucking danced. Like, that, why aren't you? Like, that we're that almost was? together now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's official. No, no, I think she What just, was your favorite song, though? I thought my, mine was uh, uh, Brian Adams. Oh, wow. Remember yeah, remember yeah. the song for, for Robin, Robin Hood? Hood. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure, from Robin Hood. You remember that? The very end of the movie? That was the jam. That's not even his best song, dude. No, but it was Summer the one of, What's that one song, Summer of 69? Summer of 69. That's a, a fucking yeah, great song great for Brian Adams. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but the one you're thinking of was, because the popular slow dance songs yeah, were that guy, Brian that Adams, they were Boys to Men, and then it was the Bodyguard song mm -hmm. with uh, Whitney Houston. That shit came on and everybody had to slow dance. I die for you. Oh yeah, there's that you one. You know it's true. Yes. Everything I do. Uh -huh. Do it for you. What a great song. That was, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was the one, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, it just came to me. Yeah. I'm so mad that I can't remember. I feel so, I'm so sorry, honey, whoever you are. I'm so sorry I can't remember my very first female like <laughs> slow dance. Like, you I were like, unmemorable. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. what I feel like. I'm like, what, what a douchebag I am. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't, man. She's like, I remember the first time I danced with Mind Pump Adam <laughs> <laughs> in fourth grade. <laughs> Was it fourth? Oh, man. Dude, I had a... I, I, had don't, a, really I don't remember. I remember my first kiss. Yeah, yeah, remember one of my very... I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah. for sure. One of my dance very first like girlfriends <laughs> who I like, because she was my first girlfriend, so I totally fell for her, right? Uh, Anne Marie. Uh, one of my very first girlfriends, you would date an Amber. Would uh, she would get like totally turned on whenever R and B was on for whatever reason. Like if I put R and B music on, like for sure we're gonna get into that. Like, actually works. Yeah, with her it was uh, weird. She's like, oh my god, don't put that on because you know how it makes me. And I was like, of course, what am I gonna put on? Like, Fucking R and B. <laughs> and uh, <Ooh>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. What's Col going on? Sal, dude. stop it, Sal. Stop it. Sex you up. Oh, fuck. Color dude, Me Bad. Color Me Bad yeah, she, was the she shit, just dude. She starts like back in India. Dude. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I watched Color Me Bad uh, the other day on YouTube because I'm like, oh, fuck. Color Me Bad. They were so awesome. The cheesiest music video I've ever seen in oh, my entire best. life ever. Remember the one dude that looked like George Michael? Yeah. <laughs> he was like <laughs> an ugly George beard. Michael. Yeah. yeah. God, what a, yeah, what a great... Ugly. Yeah, that was like a Justin Timberlake and and that guy like made fun of them like in that the the Lonely Island those videos. Yeah, like, oh, I love that. Now, it how important do you guys think in the box? How important do you think it is to have had these experiences, right? Where you 
sweating like crazy, nervous as hell, have to ask the girl, go do this dance. Like how how important do you think these moments were in your life into forming your character now? Like cuz I think about this and how different it is. Like mm. the, I do I don't think the kids have to do this same thing where they Got to go ask the girl and and they that, text them. Yeah, they're like right. No, really though, <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, do they do it all me? aloof. They're just yeah. like, yeah, whatever. You know, you want to. Ah, yeah. I think it's still stressful. Fuck. You know what's freaking me out right now? That's I'm just literally getting a little bit of anxiety is surrounding this. I'm thinking of the shit that I did with my girlfriend, eighth grade girlfriend. The stuff that we did, and I'm realizing that my kid is one year away from that. Oh man. I mean, yeah, we, we did gnarly. some shit, dude, and yeah. I was a little kid, and we were yeah. we were doing a lot of touching and rubbing and stuff, yeah. and that's Ooh. fucked up, man. Jeez. If I Jesus, I hope my kid's not doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> little, touch and rub. I mean, I don't, maybe I am. I don't know. No, yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. You know, do you guys remember your first kiss? Yeah. Dude, come on. Yeah. How, how do you guys work? What was your deal? Like, did you were, the, were you the one that leaned in, or did she lean in? No, I, uh, mine was organized. I instigated it. Mine was organized. Like, her group of friends, my group of friends. It was yeah. we, It was at the water slide park. It was meet well, over. So you had a crowd. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was like a crowd. In front what, of everybody? What is that? Yes. Why? Because at that age, there there is this- uh, You have to validate it. Yeah, and you need, and you need that- you Plus, need, what's the use of making out when nobody sees it at that age? And you can't age, prove right? it, right? Because yeah. you're yeah, at that- like, You're talking oh, about- yeah, your girlfriend yeah, in Alaska. What yeah. are we talking right. about here? Fourth, <laughs> fourth fifth times. grade time, right? And I remember- Wow, you were- Wait, you did a full-on make out in fifth grade? Like tongue? Yeah, but it wasn't like- Let's be honest with ourselves here. <laughs> it's kind of a sloppy. Yeah, it was a little like it was more thing. like oh, uh, uh, you know, it's like uh, yeah, not a lot of. I wouldn't call it a makeout session. Yeah. Like I didn't, I don't think I was uh, well versed in uh, French until like uh, freshman year of high school. I think by then I would say that was a makeout session. Uh. Like, but this was like a. You know, kissing, a little bit of tongue in the mouth, come back, tell your friends, and them asking you, did you stick your tongue in her mouth? Like, yeah, dude, I did, I yeah. did, I did. What was it like? You, you know, go, go from to- like a smashing phase to like a too much tongue, like, you know, almost like a tube tongue. Kind <laughs> of, you know, like, it's like too much. The, uh, I remember that we, it was, back. it was all scheduled to happen at, like, so I just got this girlfriend and it was a couple weeks later, uh, we were heading into like summer and there was the big, uh, you know, our where we grew up. There was a water park not far from us, and they were, you know, had a school. It was a school function, but we had a lot of freedom. Like there was, you know, chaperones and stuff like that. But I mean, it was a huge water park, so you could go find areas. And so it was like, listen, you're gonna go meet Emily over on the picnic bench, you know, after we get there, and this and that. And so there was this huge plan. And I remember like coming around like. The, the grassy knoll and there's a there there she is sitting on the picnic bench with like five of her girlfriends. How were you stressing out? Oh yeah. fuck yeah. So hands sweating like crazy, <laughs> you know, nervous as fuck. Wanting to back out, can't White back knuckles. out now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody's can't back out. Not yeah. pussing out now. Like I mean I'm in, I'm committed, right, yeah, to doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Said I would. Of course I'll kiss her. I'll fucking kiss her. <laughs> Dude, you know, like this. of course I was going to do that. But then when time came to, you know, go over there and do that, it was like, oh shit, it's about to go down. And so it's funny because it was like, she's like 50 yards away. So she could absolutely turn around, see me standing there with my five friends. She's over on the picnic bench with like her five friends. And then we're like sending one or two friends back and forth. They, are you ready? Like, is he ready? Okay, yeah. yo, he's ready. He, we're cool on this side. Is she cool over there on that side? Yeah, okay. Okay, well, he's- You're, you're just praying for like an earthquake or something. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm like looking over my shoulder like, please God, let one of the teachers come over here and bust us and break us all up and tell us to go back and go play or some shit, right? But I'm like, fuck, no, this is going down, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. And so I remember walking over there and, you know, what I don't remember as vividly, like all of that detail, like I could, I could picture it all in my head. And then the moment between that and us actually kissing and happening, like I don't remember how I made the first move. Like, did I grab her hand? Did I lean in on her? Was it like just as soon as I got over there? Like that part is like very fuzzy to me. But I definitely remember the lead up to it, how sweaty my hands were, how nervous I was to go over and do it, and then the experience of doing it and then being like, fuck yeah, I did it. Fuck yeah, yeah. I, gave, fuck yeah I gave her my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> All of it, dude. Disgusting. I totally received it. Gross. What yeah. about you, Justin? Yeah. I, it was- uh, You're all college. Oh, man. <laughs> no, dude. It was like Actually, fourth you're, grade. I know. Of course you are. You're the fucking poon houndiest of us all. Come on, man. What are you talking <laughs> about? Bus Chuck. Uh, yeah. Yeah, seriously. No, it was fourth grade, and we were outside of class, and like I had had my friends ask- you know, Adrian to go out with me 
and and be like my girl you know like that's what you do back yeah. then you said go around well remember that yeah you want to go around go out no it's yeah. go out oh, you you go, go out, out? Yeah, you go, out go out with us. her yeah. oh i said go I around know. i don't know yeah. school you're from sorry yeah yeah san jose so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got all the gangbangers <laughs> <laughs> we call it go out yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 can't really go out anywhere here yeah. you're just gonna go around yeah, you're gonna go around in circles here you guys go around over there we had open campus you know so we we were allowed to go out and go do stuff like that maybe over here in the bay area you guys would have to go around actually hang out yeah you can't really leave here so do you want to go around with me we'll just go walk i can't tell you how many times though i said like i'm going out with that girl and we agreed but we like never talked or like even yeah. like interacted oh, at all. Hundred like, percent, so many times. Hundred percent, I remember yeah. that. So I, I like they called me out on that. My friends were like, "No, dude, you're not going out with her. You're just like." You know, you're hanging out, whatever. I'm like, no, man, I'm going out with her. You know, they're like, no, you haven't even kissed her or anything. I'm like, Pff. yeah, dude, I'm totally gonna kiss her. Like, no, you're not. You know, they're just talking shit. And so I, I kind of went over and like, hey, you know, here's the deal. Um, like my friends, like they don't believe me that I'm going out with you. Like, can we solidify this? You know, can we like make this a thing? And so she got all embarrassed, but she like totally agrees. She's like, all right, okay, you know, we can kiss. I'm like, cool, we can kiss. And we had like agree to this. And she's like, I don't know, my mom, you know, she's real strict, blah, blah, blah. She's giving me this whole backstory. I'm like, whatever, you know, cool. Let's make it, you know, we'll make it quick, whatever. And after like school was out, I remember this vividly. She was, she walked down to the end of the ramp, you know, those trailer, you know, classrooms. Oh, yeah. Like she was at the end of the trailer classroom. And she was trying to be all cute about it and like like put her foot back and kind of leaned in with her her, her face all puckering up like like that. And I was like, I looked at her like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's so weird. And then I just like ah, ah, like awkwardly like kind of grabbed her and then I just like sm- like smashed her into me and just was like kissing her and then she was just like Whoa. like yeah. and then we we finished and then like my friends got confirmation. I was like ah. Oh, and then I went on the bus. Next day, she broke up with me because, <laughs> like, the teacher, like, called her mom. <laughs> she's like, do you know what your Busted. daughter's doing? And, you know. Uh, your I son's so forcing mad. himself on my like, daughter. You cock-blocking teacher. <laughs> yeah, right. You so know what? You, you just brought up a memory. You know what I thought, think about when I think of fourth and fifth and sixth grade? Uh, the insecurities. Oh of, fuck! It's of, the most awkward. Oh, seventh, of, eighth, all the way up to of, eighth grade. Oh, totally right. It wasn't until high school did I break free from this. Of that's that time when you're not sure how developed you are as a young boy. Like I'm a boy starting to make his way into manhood. You know, just starting to get armpit hair, a little bit of hair on your legs. And I remember girls that age. I like, was the first one with pubes. Oh, uh, I re- <laughs> of course for, you just were. seriously. Did you get to- <laughs> Between me and my friends and cousins, I was the first one with the. Right. Oh, see, I was did a. Did you prove it? Every, it was like. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's like yeah, remember you know, that, <laughs> dude? I. Ah, yeah. right. but it was like it was like a it was like a source of pride. You know yeah. what I mean? Like like Sal, fuck, you got pubes. Well, God, you. Know. Another so memory, just my, I remember standing around with my younger friends just and like pluck it, plucking yeah. out a pube to show your buddies yeah. that oh my like, God. you have, a little, like, you have pubic yeah. hair. That was such like a thing. It was, in the and what it is is girls, <laughs> girls at you know fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Some, I mean, I remember some girls getting their their period as early. Oh, girls as mature grade. faster. Than yeah, the they board, mature man. so much. So all of a sudden, womanhood is here for them, and we're still young boys, right? Oh, we're and fucking so bumbling this, idiots. Which, yeah. by the way, we never grow out of. Bunch of I literally, I remember going to junior high my mom rolling me up to like because i went to a junior high that was seventh and eighth Mm -hmm. and i'm you know boys were still kind of idiots at that age or you know like i said earlier we're always idiots and i'm rolling up and i'm looking at the girls i'm like oh my god what happened like boobs yeah like girls have boobs boobs? now look how tall they are yeah like and you're just like that just adds another layer of the awkwardness uh of being a teenage boy Mm -hmm. going through puberty it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. I remember yeah, that's uh, why hugs were so popular. <laughs> the, you know right? I mean? Do you remember that? You remember that phase yeah. where it was just like yeah. you know before Fuzzy I leave sweaters before I boobs. leave school I went yeah. around and like God I remember, I remember being thinking yeah. you had so much hey, swag too. And you just like, get so many before hugs. I leave before like, I leave campus like all the hugs. Oh totally, I was yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, let yeah. me let me let me hug the seven girls before I leave real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. the man. Yeah, yeah, right. I used to have a wallet when I was a kid. This is funny, right? I don't know if you guys did this. I and I had a picture of like every cute girl, you know, in 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 your in your grade, right? And she was like, I so I had a I had all. 
all of them signed my yearbook. Oh like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like, and and then you car- you carried around this wallet full of all the girls, all the girls that were in your class, and you got their, their you know, when you get the little uh, old mills photos or whatever the fuck oh, they are, yeah, yeah, just yeah, comes yeah. and takes photos. You get the little wallet size, oh, wow. and then I had just this wallet full little of glamour shots. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, totally right. And then yeah, uh, like before I left cards. school every day, made sure to go around, and make sure I got my hug. Yeah. See you later, Lisa. See you later, Emily. Mm-hmm. No, See you later, Tanya. Just, my yeah. first, my first kiss Alexis. was much, yeah. much later <laughs> yeah. than you guys. I think. See my, ya, Alexis. My, mine was seventh grade. That's w- see. What's weird is that you you beat us to the pubic area. Wow. But you didn't as far you as you skipped right past yeah. the hugs. Oh, over. I was having sex, but I didn't make it. <laughs> <sex. laughs> he's like, he's like, like how's an anal? <laughs> yeah. uh, no. like, Where were you guys? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, seventh, Whoa, dude. seventh grade, and there was this girl. You got to kiss her first, It's called growing up. Yeah. You know, you there was gotta ramp girl, it up to There that. was this girl in my class that her name was Claudia, and she was, uh, I was totally didn't like her at all, but she was totally into me. So I was like, cool, I, I get to make out now. Like, I didn't even like her. But we just sat there and made out like two days in a row. And then I told her I don't want to kiss you anymore. And that was it. That was my first time. <laughs> yeah, I'm over it. There you go. Yeah. I don't like the taste. Yeah. I just wanted to, <laughs> why'd you make that accent? <laughs> I don't like the taste. Hey, 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 lady, I don't like your taste. I don't like your I don't like your mouth. No, and that was it, dude. That's, uh, that's how I lost my kiss uh, <laughs> wow. kissing bird. Which if you think about fuck, man, that's young, dude. Mm. Doing that kind of shit, you know what I mean? Well, I don't yeah, like that. Now is. that I have kids, I don't, I don't like I don't that want shit. To think about it. Yeah, 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 you think. Well, I mean, if, for boys around that, I remember being interested fourth, fifth grade, man. Oh yeah, but I didn't become serious interested until eighth, ninth. Oh, that's when it gets. That's yeah. when it gets painful. Well, th- for me, I was mm. like, you know a, what I mean, Justin? I yeah. do. <laughs> for me, being, I do. For me, being the late bloomer, I didn't have pubes in fourth grade like you did. Like it was. I didn't late. say you have a fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what grade it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was later. It was later for me. So once I had put it together that okay I'm for sure a man like and then uh, that and that drive kicked up like my best friend had a mustache <laughs> I was did like, really? dude yeah. you are awesome right yeah, yeah. <laughs> right but he was the first go ball there was like one kid there's always that there's always that one kid that right? sucks <laughs> it is always that guy the guy yeah. that got the beard and the mustache really oh, he always got to go bald, go bald. bald. Isn't that yeah. funny yep for yeah, sure. I, I remember the, the the a distinct difference between the the junior high relationship going out going around whatever you want to call it courting and and how you hung out with and how you probably treated or you acted with your girlfriend versus high school. I went like polar opposites, right? Like Justin said, I totally can relate to dating a girl when you're in, you know, junior high type time. You she's your girlfriend, but you never fucking even spend any time with her. Like you, you just claim you yeah. just agreed that you I liked each other. This one over right. There. And maybe <laughs> one, once every three months you kissed them to say you did it or whatever like that and you and you pass notes every once in a while. Yeah. Other than that, you really didn't spend very much time talking to her or, or spending time, any time playing with her because you're playing with your bu- your buddies. High school. Then you find out how fun it is playing with them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you find out they're way more fun, fun to hang out and play with. And then you go the other extreme. You totally alienate your boys. And you're like, at lunchtime, you're holding hands and walking with your girlfriend everywhere. Yeah, and your friends are like, what the fuck, <laughs> yeah, man? Yeah, You changed, man. Yeah, right? And then yeah. you go through that whole that whole uh, couple like, of years. You see a practice. Leave me alone. <laughs> dude, I had, I had like this little- <laughs> Don't be mad at me because you don't have a girlfriend. Dude. Yeah. Because you can't get a girlfriend. Why don't you cut your hair? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't yeah. you cut your hair? <laughs> I'm trying to help him out. You your know? face is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Bring out the bird, uh, uh, Here comes the nostalgia bird. Woo! Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from FitM28. She is an aspiring trainer and her mom wants her to help her lose weight for a cruise. But she knows doing things the right way, she probably won't lose weight for a couple months. Where should you start with a person who is not athletic and has very little mobility? Couple oh. things. If you don't, if this person does not have any of the MAPS programs, um, I mean, now that we have MAPS, then we have MAPS Prime Pro, which to me is 
where I would start. Anybody that, if I have a question, if I'm concerned, like with a client, with a family member, a friend, a referral that comes to me and says, uh, you know, very deconditioned, mm-hmm. aches and pains, older, not sure, 100%, I'm starting everybody with MAPS Prime, Prime Pro in that area. Like, let's find all the dysfunction that's going on in their body. Let's find what they're capable, they're not capable of doing. Let's show them, let's teach them the these simple basic movements that has nothing to do with weights and dumbbells and machines and, extra, and hardcore exercising. What are some basic movement patterns I can help improve this person's life dramatically. Meanwhile, I know that's going to burn more calories, which in turn will help burn more fat, and I'm going to improve their overall mobility. So 100%, I'm sending this person that direction first is to take them through that process. And then you know, they're, I'm going to take them through probably like a MAPS red type of structure, but I'm also going to modify it uh, for somebody with... Uh, that is like then that's why we did the pre phase in, in maps red right it's mm-hmm. it's a regression to to for a lot of people that are jet that are super deconditioned and one of the most common mistakes that we have seen from people that are trying to get in shape is the over application of intensity and volume out the gates and if you're somebody who's been sitting on a couch eating bad food and you haven't been training in the gym you really don't need to go in and do a whole lot at the beginning so less is really more in that situation I yeah know. i think definitely prime prime pro uh to kind of assess and see you know where the dysfunctions lie but really just ramping up everyday activity like it doesn't even matter you know what uh, j- just standing up more, moving more, like, uh, you know, getting outside, hiking, uh, doing house chores, like, like just this moving and, 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 you know, tracking that process really more than anything, um, with somebody in this, you know, specific case, because, um, you know, if you get too, <clears throat> if you get too focused on having to hustle to, to produce a result, uh, you know, this is where, you know, down the road, like she may regret that or may, may compile upon, an, you know, an impending, uh, you know, potential injury or something like that, that may, you know, unveil itself. So, um, and, and plus like, this is half of the battle. A lot of times is your new trainer is like, you know, do I give them exactly what they want, which is just to run right. and starve themselves? Right. Or is it to actually, you know, make an impact that, that's going to last a while? That's the big, that's really the, the, the important part of this question is you, as a trainer, you're going to encounter lots of clients like this where they want, they're going to tell you, I need to lose 15 pounds in a month and a half because I'm have a wedding or I'm going to Vegas or I have an event that I need to get you know in shape for. That's why I'm hiring you. You as a trainer know that if you do things the right way, they're not going to lose that 15 pounds very quickly. Um, so what do you do? Well, here's my advice to you. As a personal trainer, uh, this is for anybody, but as a personal trainer, do not compromise your integrity ever, okay? Mm-hmm. Because... Uh, you may lose a client here and there in the beginning, but if you compromise your integrity, not only will it come back to bite you in the ass later on, um, but you're not going to establish yourself as the trainer that you can be. So your goal should be with that client who says that to you is to educate them and teach them that you're going to do it the right way. And no, I'm sorry, I don't train people the wrong way. I don't crash diet. I don't I don't destroy people's metabolisms. Mm-hmm. The way I train people is I get them to a point where their their metabolisms are faster, they're stronger, they're moving better, where this becomes uh, a part of their life where they're fit and it's easier to stay fit. Not I don't take people down the path of, you know, where they go up and down yo-yo diet, lose weight, gain weight, uh, and destroy their metabolism. Don't compromise your integrity because you're going to get people like that. And a, mo- a lot of fields. And this is her mom, though. You know what I mean? Like, this especially, is a special case. Right especially here tell where her. It's like, yeah. Especially. Well, do not. You got to be real. This reminds me of like the plastic surgeon who, you know, you see some of those people who get way too much plastic surgery. And you're like, Jesus, fuck, you know, who's what plastic surgeon's operating on you, dude? You look like a lizard by now or whatever. <laughs> and look, some plastic surgeons don't have fucking integrity. Like, look, yeah. just pay me and I'll do whatever you want. Like, if, like, what a lot of surgeons will say is, or the good ones will say, I'm not going to work on you, man. You've had too many procedures done. This is getting dangerous. Well, as a trainer, yeah, they want that on the reputation. As a trainer, maintain your integrity. If a client comes to me and asks me to give, to do something to them that's going to harm them, I'm going to say no. 
I'm going to say no every single time. Now, if this person has a com- competition that they want to get into or they want to do something very, very specific in that particular regard, well, that's very different, but I'm still going to educate them and teach them you know, what we're doing is for, for this particular you know, specific thing. And I think you can, I think there's a pot, there's a, there's a way for you to kind of, to give both, right. To give your mom or give a client a little bit of what they're looking for, which is results, right. They want, they're obviously hiring or asking a a trainer for help because they want to see changed and they're not happy with. And so you can start to make some pretty good changes that can make a difference in her overall health, everything from mobility to her strength, to, uh, her eating habits and other markers like her sleep and energy just by making some subtle adjustments. And I think that sometimes our peers uh, in our field overcomplicate this. We we all sit up in our IV towers and we we debate over who who is more right about this. And there's this study that proves this is better than this. And it's like we're all debating over these things that are like really – the small, tiny little rocks in the grand scheme of things. And I think assessing your mom's eating habits and her movement patterns and getting her to improve upon a little bit of both every day, a little bit more, I think is it can be something that could alter her, change her, uh, give her great results by the time she gets to this cruise. And you don't have to worry about potentially damaging her because you're not pushing too hard, too fast. And so I would, you know, as far as takeaways here is I would uh, help her assess her eating and I would look at, you know, one to two things that I think that she can get better at. I'll give you examples of when I look at diets. It's very, you'd be surprised how common certain habits are as humans. We tend to uh, either gravitate towards the overconsumption of, uh, you know, sugar, and carbohydrates, we tend to underconsume good healthy fats. Uh, if you're, you know, the average Jane, Jane or Joe, tend to underconsume on protein. Uh, you don't exercise or move, period, enough. So, like those little things, like giving mom a goal every day now, okay, mom, you weren't really doing this before, so let's go for a one hour walk every day. You know, every day we're just gonna go for a one hour walk. That's it for the next week or two. And mom, instead of you, I know you love this dessert and you do this a lot, but I've looked at your diet and you're consuming 50 to 90 grams of sugar almost every day. Let's cut back. Let's get rid of this and this and replace it with something more whole like this. And let's do those two between the walking more and making that nutritional change. Let's see how her body uh, changes in those next two weeks and then build upon that with that same type of mentality of choosing one to two things to improve her nutritional balance and one to two things to improve her overall movement and uh, always lean more towards less is more. And and you can just slowly, continually build on that week over week leading all the way up until this cruise time. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from Prime and Glory. With the growing success of Mind Pump, have you found the need to check yourself in any aspect? I got to check Sal all the time. All the time. Before I wreck myself. Check Sal before you wreck. Uh, You beat me to it. Yeah, I know. Do do I... So for me, do I check myself on certain things? I definitely. um, I definitely try to do this uh, every single day, regardless of any success that we may find with Mind Pump. This is something I've been making a practice of mine for the last five years. I'd say the last five years of my life have been some of the most difficult years of my life. I've gone through some incredible personal challenges. And uh, through that process, um, I've learned to do this to myself almost every single day. And it's helped me quite a bit. Uh, One of the things I do in regards to mind pump is I'm always checking myself in the sense that I try to remember what, what I feel my purpose is or what drives me. 
and everybody's got a little, everybody's different in terms of what they feel the purpose is or what, the, what drives them. Like for me, I am not a money driven person typically. Now, of course I like, uh, you know, I like money for the things that it allows me to do, but I'm the last person to, you know, I don't necessarily value lots of material things. Now, can I, I can depreciate them, but it's never really a big deal to me. I mean, I remember as a 19-year-old general manager, I mean, this is back in 1999, I was making six figures plus, living at my mom's house, had tons of expendable income, and I drove a Volkswagen, and I mean, I really didn't care. Still the same one. <laughs> and I really didn't care because, uh, and I realized why I didn't care, and I wasn't even aware of it at the time. I remember people like, dude, you could buy whatever car, like, like Corvette, get a whatever. And I remember, like, I just didn't do it, and I didn't even pay attention to it. But looking Which back- Which is impressive, because we had a lot of buddies that were doing that around that time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I remember g- coming up the same time, early 20s, and all your buddies that were making the same kind of money were- uh, Yeah, a Corvette, yeah, or a yeah. Mustang, or Camaro, or something cool, or whatever. I just didn't because it just wasn't important to me, but I didn't realize it necessarily. Mm-hmm. Now, moving ahead, now I have kids and have all these responsibilities. Money means is a little bit more important to me. Now but you want a Lambo. But it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't drive me. It's not my purpose. And so I check myself in the sense that I remind myself of what drives me. Because, and, w- and what drives me is, is my message, is reaching out to people and influencing people, hopefully in a positive way, um, and really feeling, um, really feeling that I have a positive impact, or at least trying to make a positive impact. And I know that sounds all like foo foo and you know, you know, esoteric or whatever. But for me personally, when I, when I remind myself of that, the best me comes out. That's when I do my best social media posts. Mm-hmm. That's when I'm the best on the podcast. That's when I'm the most productive with the work that we do. If I start to allow myself to become money motivated then I start to actually decrease my performance because I'm not my true self. So this is one of my motivations to, to check in myself as well, which is kind of interesting. But definitely uh, just reminding myself of what is important to me and what's important to me are experiences and being able to make a positive impact uh, for lots of people and, and with the subject that I feel like I know a decent amount about, which is fitness and health. Yeah, I tend to... I mean, I I go through this quite a bit as well, as far as like checking myself on a daily basis, like, you know, just, just trying to be mindful of like recognizing people that have helped me along the way. And like, um, I mean, there's been, uh, I could, I can like name off a, a plethora of people that like come to mind that I just know, like in pivotal moments of me, you know, shifting or going from, um, you know, going off onto my own and doing training by myself or, um, you know, I had certain clients that really helped me with that process and were like, like totally supportive with that. And like had my, like, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have been able to like, you know, really, um, flourish, uh, in that environment. And, and then also like learning how to, I met, you know, certain people that, uh, helped, helped me to reframe my thought process about how I charge and like how that like formed this entire business model that really worked well for me. And, um, you know, and then just like all these different, like sort of pivotal moments. Um, I just, I can, I can identify certain people that were there. And so, you know, I try to keep like thinking about that, like who, who's been, you know, a part of like this next stage or the next sort of platform that, um, you know, I'm going through. And so that, I, yeah, just try to like not be arrogant and be like, oh, it's all about me and like how much hard work I've put in. And, um, you know, like I like a lot of times I'll get sucked into I'm working so hard. Why is this not, you know, like flourishing and why isn't all this stuff happening? And it's it's a process, man. This is always a process and there's always going to be somebody there that like, you know, I'm leaning on. So, you know, that's 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 always a constant for me. So I'm trying to like get back to that mindset like, hey, man, just be appreciative. Like, you know, these people are here supporting you and and like this is a ride. So you just got to you got to go with the ups and the downs and it'll even out. So. I, I think we're all pretty similar with some, with that too. I think that, I mean, God, I'm 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 constantly, or we're constantly checking ourselves. I think that um, we each pride ourselves on on being uh, self aware men and and always 
reflecting on things that we say, we do, uh, how we present ourselves, how we come across, like our relation, our business relationships, our our friend relationships, our family relationships, those we love, care about. Like I think we're always evaluating that, and I couldn't ask to be with a better team of guys that not only do that to themselves, but help you do that with yourself in, in a uh, in a very um, non-confronting type of way. I think that we each uh, always help each other in this direction of like paying attention to uh, our own egos, right? And I think we do it in a, in a really um, crafty way. It's pretty neat how everybody maneuvers around each other's egos because I think in order to have a show like this, you've got to have these massive egos, but at the same time, this uh, ability to have uh, unbelievable humility. And I think uh, the boys and I, we all we all have this ability to do that. So everyone is always... Uh, checking themselves and and paying attention. In fact, to be honest, when I when I first read this question, the thing that actually came to mind is uh, checking ourselves almost on the opposite. And what I mean by that is, as Mind Pump has grown, uh, I f- I find that sometimes we can be more uh, PC. And we can, we're more afraid of offending somebody or we don't want to bully somebody. Now, like in the past, when we first started, like, look out, we come a gun, guns a blazing and we didn't give a fuck. I mean, that was our first t-shirt we ever made. And the, the hashtag that we <laughs> used was zero fucks. You get everybody to post who, who owns that t-shirt. Right, right. Seriously. That'd be awesome. It, we should do it. We, sh- we should do a little yeah, throwback. It would be neat. And so that was our mentality. So when I think of checking ourselves, I sometimes think that we have to check ourselves and to not lose that flavor of a little bit a little bit of controversy and and going after that because I feel like uh, for a show which we are I think that that's an important uh, piece to it and sometimes when you get to a point where you have so many people giving you their two cents it's really easy to let them influence I remember the first time we really started to feel this where you know, we'd get, you know, emails or DMs or reviews from people being like, you know, I really don't like it when Adam does this or when Sal says that. And we would really take it to heart. Like, fuck, man, I can't, man, I did I really come off that way? And then we'd be all evaluating it, checking ourselves and like, and then you like put in a perspective, like, wait a second, fucking yesterday, 50,000 people listened to that. And you mean four people all agreed that I sounded that way or you sounded that way? Like, why am I really letting that affect my day? And so yeah. one of the things I have to constantly check myself on right now or currently in, in regards to that is uh, not allowing uh, the few people uh, to ruin my day. And I get it now. I didn't get it before. Like, I know I've heard people talk before on the, on TV and stuff about how little little Wayne will let his Twitter fans, you know, ruin his day and he'll get engaged in it and it like bothers him really bad. And I kind of get it now because sometimes it can feel overwhelming when, you know, hundreds of people are firing at you about something. But when you look at it in at the grand scheme of things, a hundred is nothing when you're talking to millions of people. So why would I ever allow, you know, a hundred people or 10 people or four people to affect my day. Uh, And that is something that I found is probably the most challenging as it grows is because it, it grows, it's now grown to a number that it's so large that it's inevitable. There is, there is yet now to be a podcast where I don't fucking offend somebody like it's somebody is offended, right? (laughs) hundred percent. Somebody is offended. I didn't come off the way they would like me to come off. I, they disagree with what I had to say. And I just have to remember that zero fucks mentality that I am who I am and I'm not going to apologize for that. Yes, I will always be checking myself and and evaluating uh, how I come off. But at the same time, too, I don't want to change my message because I'm afraid of what others will think of me. And I believe that remembering to have that kind of zero fucks mentality uh, and, and that transparency, I think that becomes more important than actually trying to deliver the perfect message that everybody receives and everybody likes. Amen. Tim Imbo, feels like you all have evolved since the creation of Mind Pump. 
Have you ever thought of being a life coach to help others achieve goals outside of health and fitness? Is there any more pretentious? I am a life coach. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's Let's go to parties it's, and like it announce sounds it. like the most. That's a ballsy profession. Yeah, you know what it says. It takes some fucking massive hey, balls. Are you doing life right? Yeah. Like, uh, I, no, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me not coach. well yeah. enough. Yeah. Let me show you how to kick <laughs> ass at it, though. You know what? The, you yeah. know, okay. So the term life coach, and look, there's definitely some life coaches out there that are and, very valuable. Definitely a somebody that right do, now that do very well <laughs> i don't know any but, life coaches i'd hang out but with. But, but for the most part this <laughs> that. this term was invented because there's laws against saying therapist and unless you're certified and licensed therapist you can't mm. say therapist so they invented a <laughs> they invented the term life coach and now anybody can be a yeah. life coach so it's funny when you read therapist on paper sometimes you, yeah you get confused why the rapist oh my god like, yeah, yeah it does say that yeah. doesn't it Oops. um but <laughs> like to me when oh, i used to trip me i up. never put that together yeah. until right now Thanks, thank you boom yeah. you're welcome thank everybody you. knowledge bomb it yeah. sounds to me like like you're at a party and you're like hey you know how you doing what's your name oh you know i i, I you know what do you do for a living oh i you know I'm a doctor. Oh, what do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm a life coach. And you're like, in your mind, you're like, he's unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do. He doesn't do anything. He just says he's struggling a life coach. musician. Yeah, yeah, just you know, life coach. Um, I would. Uh, here, I mean, isn't, you know what a life coach really? You know what? I've been a life coach. Somebody who rents land. My my entire career, I've been a life coach. It's called personal trainer. Right. Let's be honest here. Like, right. Right. Yeah. Most of the when you're a personal trainer, most of the training that you end up doing with your clients, or at least most of a lot of what you do with your clients is listening to their problems, talking with them, being a friend. You know, you give some advice, but really a lot of it's just listening. People like to, it feels good to talk to somebody and have them listen to you. And that's what happens. I mean, that psychological piece in regards to fitness is important, but there's also just the, hmm. man, I would get dumped on by clients, by, you know, what's happening with their spouse and their kids and their job. And I mean, non-fitness related things was like, 80% of the conversation, yeah. if not all of the conversation well, while we're training. a good friend. Exactly. You know, like, honestly, like, yeah. it's so self What's your job? I'm a, a title I'm a on that, you know, like, that's so self-serving. Yeah. yeah. They go to the life coach. Like, like, how about you just be their friend and, like, be, like, keep them accountable and, like, tell them the real deal. Well, we talked about, okay, so, you know. <clears throat> and look, complete, some people com- get a lot of value out of the. Out well, of, yeah. Out of, okay. So, I, complete, yeah. Complete, complete transparency here, right? I think that, um. I don't think we would ever do something exactly like that where we said that we're a life coach. Um, one, I don't, I don't think we that, would say guru. Well, right? we'll yeah, be your no, no. <laughs> well, I don't, sure. I don't think there's enough money, they charge uh, money in doing it because I, I still have, it's just like back going back to personal training. I can only help one person at a time. And the, the, the money side of me, the financial side says like it's, it would be a regression. It wouldn't make sense to, it wouldn't be an evolution of what we're doing. It would be uh, regressing. I mean, right now there for sure is uh, a, a way more than a handful of people that we can help through the podcast. So uh, it would be going backwards. Now, what we have talked about potentially doing is, you know, doing like this full makeover on a person where, they get to come in 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 studio and actually get trained by all three of us, not just personal training, but like all aspects uh, of their life, which is pretty much personal training for us and has has always been. But that full red carpet treatment where they actually come in studio, they get trained by us. We address diet. We de- address all the psychological issues. We address all the insecurities. We address all these things that they're they're battling and dealing with, and we help them through that process. Um, I know that we wouldn't call it life coach. I know that we would name it something different and probably more creative. Uh, but I don't I think that's an evolution. I kind of want to be like a, a life coach that's like also a magician. You know? Like, <laughs> well, like combo. You know? like just, I don't know. It's just be awesome. <laughs> just like do tricks. <laughs> yeah. I can teach you how to do life. Check <laughs> this out. Eat this box of Smoke donuts. Bomb. <laughs> Look, you're fat now. Oh. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Yeah." laughs> <laughs> you have like a, you have like yeah. a tennis ball in your head. That wasn't like, a magic yeah. trick. Like, this is what we're gonna do to your income if you uh, followed my advice. Boom, four yeah. t- tennis yeah. balls. We'll quadruple it. Give me your money. Magic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So here's this is you're gonna get. We're gonna get. I know what's gonna happen. We're gonna get a lot of messages from people who are gonna be like, oh my god, yeah. I had a life coach and it helped I'm me so much. Yes. And they, and they did. I'm not taking anything away from that. But mm. something you want to ask yourself is how much of that life coach helping you. 
was the life coach and how much of that life coach helping you was you making the decision to hire a life coach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like And talking your way through all well, these things. I yeah, do, like, I, like you're in that I space do, where you're no, going to hire I someone. Do, I do think there are a lot of people that can greatly benefit from this. And I think a lot of these are the same people who don't have a, a a relationship or whether it be a friendship or a partner yeah, or that they a mentorship yeah or that they like can that, that yeah. they can get this from which I that's totally understandable like I uh, I definitely went through a period in my life where I think I most certainly could have used a life coach type of person because at that time I felt I had evolved beyond a lot of my peers I didn't have a close friend of mine who I felt like yeah when it came to advice on things I really was uncertain about did I have a friend that I trusted to give me good information or give good advice ah no I didn't think I had that really and I didn't have a great mentor so there was a little period of time there where I felt like and I wasn't in a relationship with someone like Katrina that I could bounce things off of and help gather my thoughts if you don't have someone like that I think those people make a huge difference for those people I mean that's a to yeah. me I mean it's uh, the ability part of what we talk about our growth personally in the last couple of years because of the show is because we have three other men in this room that we respect uh, their level of intelligence, uh, self-awareness, emotional intelligence to be able to give advice back to us. And so uh, we, sure we scoff at life coach because we don't see uh, it necessary for our lives because we have we, we have each other and in addition to that we probably each have other friends or mentors or relationships that we have currently where we can reach out and get get that now if you're somebody who doesn't have that which is I think a lot more people than we think uh, yeah. that that type of person so, can be so I just looked up the qualifications to be a life coach obviously it's not a regulated industry so you, anybody could say they're a life coach but there's actual certification courses. It's like you can it's, take, like, it's no different than personal that training. That they become a life coach and you take their course and then you're a certified life coach. Mm. So, I mean, look, if it brings you value, that's awesome. Um, I, I, I've always thought it was interesting. The name was interesting. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like life is yeah, everything. Where do, you, where do you go with that? So like I'm an everything coach. I mean, it's a lot of, yeah. but you know, I'm sure I'm pissing people off now. <laughs> Not, I mean, look, I mean, if it brings you value. Like business, then, psychology. Then, then go for it. it. Yeah. If it brings you value, go for it. Sure. Um, I personally don't think I could ever call myself a life coach. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I think what, what the feels like you guys have all the creation of mind pump. Have you ever thought of being a life coach to help others? Did you see, uh, to me, that would be a regression to what we're built. I mean, we well, I feel it's part of it anyways. You know, you well, talk yeah, about course, life issues course. and you know, what's going on, what your struggles are. That's just the natural I mean, we, progression. I, I foresee us going back and building out even more uh, than what we already have. So if you, if you don't know this or those that are listening, you know, we created not that long ago a 30 days of free coaching uh, on our website. So you go to our website, you drop your email in the uh, mindpumpmedia.com and you can sign up for 30 days of free coaching. And we've organized that through all the topics that we kind of address, both physical and psychological with clients. And I think we, I could see us going back and bolstering that with even more uh, stuff dealing with your your everyday life, health and fitness and goals outside of just fitness um, and making it even more thorough and in-depth with maybe resources even outside of our own like information that we've provided on this show and and bolstering that more. So I definitely think that, you know, but I mean, shit, that to me, that's so much better. We can help thousands of people versus me scheduling time for hour blocks to sit down and listen to somebody tell me about how bad their life is and me help them connect the dots on how it's not and that's it's you know, their the, outlook. The irony of this all is the is that some of the like top executives of the world have life coaches. Yeah. Well let's talk about why that is and I'll tell you right now I, I can I can nail that right away. That's they don't have most, anybody checking them. Well and a lot of those and we can you can attest to this. Think of all the, the brilliant minds that we've met over the last couple of years most of these super high level executives and brilliant minds are very socially awkward mm -hmm. and don't have a lot of friends and a lot of relationships. It's an echo chamber. Exactly. So they're all the people that they're talking to are people that are listening to them, seeking advice from them, and no one is really checking them. And they don't have and that's that's just it's very common, especially at that level. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. You're a CEO, you're this super alpha personality, everyone mm -hmm. listens to you, nobody you're no one's checking you on your bullshit. Mm -hmm. You probably should hire somebody to check you on your Which shit. Is where that makes sense, but then somebody that like idolizes whatever guru is like, you know, was worked with Steve Jobs, you know, like, oh, I'm going to listen to everything they say when they could just listen to their friend. Right. You know, and get the same benefit. Right. Right.
Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com, put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash nature bite, put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next question is from Amanda K. Lifts. Do you believe in psychics? And uh, have you ever had a psychic geez. experience? Of Sal Witt here. It's Stupid. So, even so though I believe in ghosts. Mr. So <laughs> third Rail. You love to text <laughs> Third Rail lately, man. It's, it's so weird. I, I like knew he would ask this question. So, <laughs> you know what? You know what? Yeah. What's that old joke? Like, the, uh, what's the one headline yeah, yeah. you never seen in a newspaper? Psychic wins lottery. Psychic. Yeah. Um, do, uh, if you ask me if I believe in psychics. Dude, Nostradamus predicted everything that exactly. happened so far. I'll have to say. I'll have for me personally. I have to say no. Do I know people who've had some crazy experiences with psychics? Yes, I have a, a cousin who went to a psychic, and uh, she had got a, gotten out of a breakup, a really bad breakup. And I guess there's a psychic that everybody's like, "You got to go see her. She's like fucking amazing. She knows everything. Whatever." Mm. She went to the psychic, and the psychic literally told her when she was going to meet the next guy, how she's going to meet him, and that this was going to be. Her husband and that they were going to have two kids and they were both going to be hmm. daughters or whatever. And it all, it all turned you know what out. My theory is it all turned out that way. Sh- the, this person's probably like artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I have a I have a theory Trippy. on this. And um, have you guys ever had an experience? I, I've with had you? lots of people exactly what you said. So lots and lots. In fact, Katrina's family. We were literally just this weekend. Her niece went to a medium. And had her share all this stuff with her. And she was blown away by how on point everything she was. I talked to somebody maybe six months before that sharing a very similar story. So it's I've been around it a lot. And uh, my theory on it is this. I don't necessarily believe in psychics. What I do believe is I believe the mind is way more powerful than we think it is. And we're still learning about how powerful it is. And it's amazing when you put thoughts into your head, uh, whatever they may be, good, bad, or indifferent, um, how much more control you have of your life and your life's outcome than you think you do. And I think that, uh, to me, psychics prove more of that than they really believe, than they really prove that there's this uh, this clairvoyance proven the art of persuasion right like they've mastered it right and i and i think that um i think there definitely is a much there's a skill that comes in that comes with these with these psychics i think that um and i think that a lot of that is like justin just said is the the power of persuasion and i think if you tell me enough that I'm a good boy and I'm smart and I'm a good boy and I'm smart and I'm a good boy and I'm smart. I must be a good boy Whoa, on a loop. and I'm smart, you know, like it's, it's amazing. And then if you have people in, on the other side that get told these things uh, over and over how they're stupid and they're not a good, and they're a bad boy and they're stupid. And they're a bad boy. Then they grow up and guess what? They end up being stupid and a bad boy. Mm. And is that, is that because that person predicted that that was that person's they life? they embedded it in there and right. they really believed it as you were telling it. Well, right. I'll, I'll, right. T- I'll tell you what, here's what's interesting about this is that a couple things. One, um, our own government invested uh, quite a bit of money. The Stargate uh, mm. was a which doesn't men mean, who stared which, goats, which That's doesn't right. mean shit to me because our government will invest in any chance of possible. <laughs> well, especially, leverage. especially, especially trying to find the lost art, especially yeah. <laughs> especially <laughs> during the Cold War, right? When they were like, let's just let's just right. see any if we edge, can get any, any edge. edge, any edge. But what's interesting is some of these studies, which uh, you know, you could debate whether the studies were well done or not, but some of these studies showed. That with like remote viewing, for example, they had a statistically better uh, odds of getting the right answer than just random. And this has been done in a few studies where people will, uh, well, they'll test it. And because you think psychics should be very easy to test, right? It should be easy. Like, oh, you think you're a psychic? Come in here and prove it. And that has yet to happen. It has yet to happen where someone actually solidly proves that they're a psychic. But there is strange phenomena 
that we observe in science that is kind of weird. Like they've shown that people can kind of sense when someone's staring at them. You guys ever feel like someone's staring at you and you look yeah. and they are? Yeah. Some studies show that that might actually be uh, kind of a real thing. Um, then there's also uh, blind sight, which is kind of interesting, which we didn't discover. We just discovered not that long ago where people will have a stroke in the visual cortex of the brain. So that part of the brain is dead. So they're effectively blind, fully functioning eyeballs and everything, but they don't see anything because their brain doesn't perceive sight. Yet when shown pictures of faces, the, the, the viewer will mimic the face that they're looking at, even though they can't see it. So they're, the scientists call it blind sight. Like there's some other parts of the brain huh. that are perceiving sight aside from the visual cortex. And when they do these tests on uh, these people in an fMRI machine, they do in fact see other parts of the brain lighting up whenever a face is being displayed in front of them. Wow, they're mimicking it with their expression and everything. Huh? Yeah, and it's, it's a 100%. Trip. It's called blind sight. You can look it up. It's a real thing. Um, and of course, the scientists, you know, they'll go back and say, well, you know, a huge part of our evolution was, uh, you know, looking at faces yeah, and facial recognition, facial recognition yeah. takes up a huge part huge. of the brain. So it's really, there's a lot of interesting things that we start to like, here's another one, uh, synesthesia, you know, this is where, and th there's real cases of this where people will see sounds Sound, yeah. or they'll smell sights, yeah. um, or, you know, um, if you say a number to them, they can they'll get a sensation, mm -hmm. and it's a real psychological phenomena. And sometimes this happens to normal everyday people when they take a psychedelic. Like you know, people talk about mm. they'll 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 take LSD, and then all of a sudden they'll see the music coming out of the speakers and stuff. Isn't so this is also like when somebody gets in an accident, and uh, I've heard somebody like like all of a sudden could play like classical music because uh, it unlocked a certain part of their brain or or somebody will get in an accident and they'll get a brain trauma or something and then all of a sudden become artists or right. extremely good at math or they speak with a russian accent or something like they've never <laughs> this is real it's a this, trip yeah it's really weird stuff so you know i i don't know if i necessarily believe in the the magic of the psychic ability but i do think that there's a way more than we understand and if we look at, I mean, here, here, I'm going to start stretching now. I'm going to go for a real deep stretch mm. here. It time as experienced by us is in this linear fashion, past, present, future. We experience it like we do on a clock. That's how we perceive time. But science tells us that time doesn't really work that way. Time, you know, the space time are, are, are connected together and it kind of, it can be moved. It can be bended and, you know, um, it could be warped. You could slow time down. You could speed it up. I mean, the clocks on the satellites that are orbiting the Earth that give us the directions on our GPS have to account for the fact that they're moving at a certain speed and that they're at a, at a different gravitational pull. So their clocks actually... Yeah, time is different the further out in space you get. If we took... This is an experiment that, you, uh, that would actually be true. If we took a twin of yours and put them on a rocket that sped off at the speed of light and came back 30 years later, you'd be 30 years older. Your twin would barely have aged at all. So all this, you know, this points to the fact that time isn't what we think it is. So perhaps a psychic is perceiving things in what we might think is the future, but in reality, they're just perceiving things outside of the perception or the realm of time that we think. And uh, so maybe that's how you can explain. Everybody put so your that, joints down. <laughs> okay. You know, so real. I think this kind of stuff is really cool. Uh, I find it. Fa I listen to I it just, all the time. I, I, my I, my girl's family is a hundred percent around it in it, and and I'm all, I, I'm definitely open minded enough of a person to actually sit and listen to it. I'm definitely not enough of a person, or I'm not enough into it to where I would waste my time going to try and get a reading. Like it's because to me, like I I think nothing is going to dictate the outcome of our lives than ourselves and our choices that we make. And um, I, I would hate for a psychic to tell me something that didn't align with <laughs> my my personal goals. You're, you're, you're never going to be successful, Adam. I'm sorry. Imagine yeah. if a psychic, you're right? Fuck you, sorry, right? Man. Like that. Yeah. Seriously, like that. Fuck with you, big time. Yeah, yeah. It would totally mess with me. So I have you're I have no I have voters. no desire to to even roll the dice and think is this a good psychic or is this some bullshitter? And the risk of potentially getting some bullshitter who gives me some information that I definitely don't want to hear. And then I have the attitude like, well, fuck it. I'm going to be a loser anyways. Yeah. Why should I even? Yeah. 
even yeah. be trying today. I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't show up to work the next day. You guys are like, where's Adam? I'll like, tell you. I'll well, tell you. They told me I was going to be fucking broke. I'll so tell just, you what <laughs> a lot of uh, successful psychics are, are, are good at because there's some psychics out there that make a lot of money and celebrities will seek them out and they're, they're really, 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 really good at reading very subtle yeah. uh, body, body, body cues and, mm-hmm. and language to where they can tell you things about and they're very good with their language there was a there was that one psychic on tv that would call people out of the audience and be like i i, I see a name it's john j j whatever and the person's like oh my god it's my it's my yeah, dad they, they get excited and they're like oh i'm honing in on this person people want to believe in this kind of shit like that's it. like like your like your horoscope yeah. like it's been proven time and time again that the horoscope predictions are bullshit but people will read their sign if and be like make it general yeah. generic enough you know somebody's like, well yeah, this is what I, will be like, and this is the type of stuff that i feel psychics do a really good job of it when i hear the readings of psychics a lot of times it reminds me the readings of horoscopes mm-hmm. it's like you give if you give somebody because you rarely and you i at least i've never heard this i have never heard someone if psychics were that true too right you would hear this now i've heard a ton of readings just like you said hey i have no psychic or no person has ever came back and told me dude the psychic told me that I'm gonna be broke, and that <laughs> I'm gonna marry somebody ugly, yeah. and I'm gonna. Ha- but that shit happens in real life. People go broke. People most, ugly. Most people, people marry ugly people. Yeah. This happens in real life. So <laughs> why does the psychic never tell anybody that? It's the same thing like a horoscope. You never open your horoscope and it says like, today is going to suck for you. Stay indoors. Yeah. Like no one ever sees yeah. that on a horoscope. It's always like they see your hand is like tan a little bit, and then it's like you know like a little bit white where your ring used to be. And like oh, I see. You know, used to be in a long term relationship. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Well, they see yeah. all your gray hair and you're yeah. all stressed out. You yeah. probably have kids. Yeah. So you got like all these <laughs> yeah. bags under your eyes. You're probably not sleeping that much. And, you know. How did you like, know that? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's like, a, I feel like they tell you fuck. shit that, that's, they're good at reading all those subtle things. They take, they. Or they, like the, the past life regression psychics. Like, they'll, you're always someone famous. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, in your past life. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You were a great people leader, wa- and it's why never do people want to like associate never, themselves with that so it, bad? It's like, never some bullshit yeah, like, oh, in yeah. a past life, you're a great warrior. Yeah, you were you were a Chinese peasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right. That's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah, what else? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh, throw shit at if you. If you're a, if you're a badass psychic and you're getting irritated with us right now and you want to prove us wrong, I'd fucking think it would be awesome. Well, they already knew this was happening. That's true. You know what I, mean? I don't need. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. You, you're, I don't need to say the rest. Yeah. You know what to do. Uh, yes, yeah. just yeah. eat. Yes, yeah, right. Email Brianna. What am I thinking? Yeah, email Brianna. You'll be on the show. Yeah, yeah you know <laughs> okay. exactly what I'm about. Now, to guarantee get. you don't know. It's like what you you walk into the, the psychic office and like, why are you here? And you're like, I don't know. Tell me. Yeah. Why am I here? <laughs> yeah, just give them nothing. Yeah. What's yeah. your name? I don't know. Tell I'm me waiting. what my name is. I'm not going to pay That you. would be fun. I would be totally open yeah. to do that Ex- for sure. Exactly. Uh, Doug, when is this airing? Because I would like to talk about the- uh, Yes, on Thursday. Thursday. Um, it's over. It's over, huh? It's over. It's It'll be over. I'm going to cry. Few more hours left. Oh, it'll be a few more hours left when this goes? All right. Well, so your final hours. If you're oh, if, if you're lucky and you listen goodness. to this right when this episode like, comes out, uh, Maps Prime Pros uh, still on sale, and we have our webinar. Hurry up on YouTube, and there's a coupon code on the webinar that's going to give you an additional discount. Uh, the, so go to YouTube, go on our channel, uh, Mind Pump TV, watch the webinar on Prime Pro. It's pretty awesome. It's our first webinar. We're going to be doing more of these, but we actually give away much of the program. We go through it. And also, we we do a new video every single day on that YouTube channel, all of them re- related to fitness. Subscribe to that channel. You'll get notifications when new videos pop up. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on these episodes, the place to do is it on Instagram. The page is Mind Pump Media. And then we all have personal pages. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. And Doug is Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. 
If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.